Welcome, everyone. I see everybody logging in, and it's always nice to see where you are logging in from. And as usual, we can see people from all over the world. I, myself, am Gustavo Tolosa, and I'm in Cordoba, Argentina, where it's 2 p.m., and it's summertime. So I'm enjoying a break from the cold weather in Dallas. And through this magic technology that we have today, we can connect with Dr. McDougall, who is in California and up here in Argentina, and all of you from all over the world. Very excited to be back. This is our second webinar of the year, and I want to welcome our hero and our very much loved Dr. McDougall. So how are you, Dr. McDougall? Fine. In fact, better every day. So uh, You look great. Summertime, huh? It is summer, yes. Yeah, well, we're, 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 we're kind of having summer here, too, in California. It's, uh, it's hotter than it should be, not enough rain. So, yeah. enjoy your time, so you're, you're in Argentina now. I'm going to spend more time there. Yeah, I'm going to spend a little more time here. And um, there, are so many, there are so many people here, Spanish-speaking people, that are interested in in you know in eating healthy and following you actually third solution and i uh, uh, i'd like to to be what i call i'm going to be the food missionary <laughs> yeah, but i know you want to come back to uh california and spend some oh, time i'm going to be I, it's not going to be easy to get rid of me so <laughs> well we want to watch you back as a matter of fact i have a deal for you <laughs> you come back, you, don't, you won't have a place to live in the United States anymore. I got a great deal for you. And that is I'm going to uh, let you have rent-free a one-acre piece of land with a beautiful swimming pool on it. And all you have to do is bring your tent set up, and you can live there for free. Uh, it happens to be an old address of mine. And then you can come and come to the program. We're running, actually, we're running a 10-day program right now. This is the 22nd of January. We've got a group of about 45 people and all kinds of problems. And, you know, I have to say, but I say this every program, I think it's a bias it's a, uh, that I can't get rid of. And that is that we've got the nicest people this time. And I thought we don't have, I say that every time. I don't know. I, but, but these people are really, really friendly and nice and very much in need. Oh. Uh, we've got you know, some very successful people in life. Uh, one fellow there, he's told, he's talked to me about a 67-foot catamaran. And he also drives a uh, ludicrous Tesla, which happens to be the same car I drive. And so we had a great time talking about it. And uh, ni Nice people, well-educated, uh, successful people by and large. Of course, you know one of the one of the uh, criterion of coming to the program is it costs money, it costs time, and a lot of people don't have that money or time. And the nice thing is, is we offer everything free on the website. So uh, you know we'd love to have see you at the program. Probably the next one is February or March. I think you're coming to, to a three day, which is really inexpensive. What is that? The, is that the ninth? Yes, the 9, 10, and 11 of February, and I want to encourage people to come. And yeah, well, we have over 100, well over 100 people signed up now, and you get to have the food and all the lectures. And it's really good. Really good. 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 Well, I'm going to start buying my tent so that I can... Get your tent. You have a free place. You can <laughs> every day. And uh, consider, we used to have so many trees. Yes. So I couldn't have any solar because... Uh, because the uh, because the, tre the trees, and now I can make my place a solar farm. Right. One day, PG&E came through and knocked down about fifty trees, and now the county's coming through and they got another fifty trees they're going to knock down. Whoa. So I'm right. I'm pretty much treeless. <laughs> well, Dr. McDougall, today we have a very Exciting topic for a lot of people because you know how blood pressure is and there's still a lot of confusion out there. Some people say, oh, this is that. And it seems that every time we look at the news, the numbers go down and down. So the everybody will be medicated eventually. 
<laughs> so we want to hear what you have to say. About blood pressure. Okay. Blood pressure is one of the uh, earlier measurements that doctors have been doing on people. And it's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, what you do is you take a cuff that's inflatable by air and you put it around your arm. I used to have one. And I was showing you, but I don't have one. You put it around your arm and then the technician blows up the cuff and uh, blows it up so that when he or she listens with a stethoscope over this brachial artery, the cuff's here, the arteries here, and you can hear the pounding sound of the blood going through it. And uh, when you pump up the uh, cuff, you finally pump it to a pressure where no blood flows through at all. So you hear nothing. You hear nothing. Then you start lowering the pressure, lowering the pressure. And at, that, at some point, the pressure gets low enough so that when the heart is beating at its strongest, systole, uh, when it's contracting, it's able to push some of that blood through that blood vessel, and you hear a pumping sound. Boom, 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 boom. Because you've got the slapping of the artery walls together. Uh, the pressure is high enough to open the artery completely, but it doesn't stay open because it's not high enough to keep it open. And so it slaps closed, and you hear that slapping sound. And then as you lower the blood pressure further, 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 what happens is it gets to a point where the blood goes through the artery, and it opens, and then slaps closed. But it gets to a pressure low enough so that the cuff gets the pressure low, low enough so that the blood vessel doesn't slap closed. And you don't see that slapping sound anymore. And that's called the diastolic pressure, which is the lowest pressure in the cycle of the system. Highest pressure when the heart muscle contracts, gives you the highest pressure. And then when the heart is relaxed, uh, it reaches a point where the pressure is high enough in the system so the artery doesn't bang to get it anymore. Instead, it stays open. And that's the lowest pressure in the system. That's called diastolic. So systolic is the top, and diastolic is the lowest. And what doctors have been doing, other professionals have been doing, is they've measured that pressure in people. And then they've seen what happens to them in their life. You know, they have a higher risk of stroke, heart attack, et cetera, what happens. And they find that people who are generally healthier uh, have a certain range of blood pressure, an ideal blood pressure. And that would be, well, it varies in terms of assessing it. But I think the number I learned is pretty good. It's uh, about 110 over 70. So in that kind of system, the blood vessels are really soft. And when you raise the pressure in the cuff, it has to only get to 110 millimeters of mercury. And then it is completely closed down. And then as you release the uh, air in the cuff, and it goes down. You hear that slapping at 110 or 100. And then the pressure goes down lower and lower and lower in the cuff. So it stays open. It doesn't slap completely closed. And so the, the sound disappears. And that's the diastolic. And people say the diastolic ideally would be 70. Now, we're talking about without medication, that would be ideal. Without medication, you can have even a lower blood pressure. I mean, you can have a blood pressure of 90 over 60. Many people do, many healthy people do. Unhealthy people do too, but that's for the wrong reason. Say, for example, they, uh, they lost some of their heart muscle. They have lower blood pressure for that reason. Well, the pressure goes up when the blood vessel system is sick. Okay? The reason it goes up when the blood vessel system, you know, the arteries mainly we're talking about, are sick is if is the job of the heart and the blood vessels is to deliver nutrients to your tissues. Oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients. And so it has to have that flow. Well, when your arteries get diseased, it's harder for the nutrients to be pushed to the tissues. And the only way the body can compensate in practical way is for, the, for it to raise the pressure. And blood pressure goes up, both the top and bottom blood pressures go up. And so what the blood pressure does is it reflects the condition of the arteries. Blood pressure itself doesn't hurt the arteries. You know, people think, oh, I've got a blood pressure. Remember I told you, let's just say 110 to 70 is normal. 
Uh, you got a blood pressure of 180 over 100. You're thinking to yourself, well, that blood pressure, well, that blood pressure's ruining my arteries, ruining my arteries. No, no, that's not what it is. The arteries are ruined. <laughs> They're ruined. As a result, the blood pressure has to uh, increase to deliver the nutrients to the tissue. Uh, it's, it's not the blood pressure that doing the damage, it's the blood pressure that's reflecting the damage done. Uh, in, in healthy people, like for example, uh, weightlifters, they'll lift these heavy barbells and they'll measure blood pressures as high as 300 over 150 millimeters of mercury. And the arteries are perfectly healthy. It's just that the pressure is responding to the strain and uh, the pressure goes up. They did some experiments during World War II. They, talking about the Germans, uh, they did pressure experiments on, oh, I hate to say this guy, I know some of you are going to get mad at me because I'm going to talk about uh, animal experiments. They would cannulate the artery of dogs and block the pressure to as high as 3,000 millimeters of mercury. And not a single blood vessel broke. The dogs died, but not a single blood vessel. But blood pressures are really, blood vessels are really, really strong and healthy until they get sick. They get diseased. And they're diseased uh, with a condition called atherosclerosis, sores in the arteries, sores, acute sores, and, and scars, and so on. As a result, the system gets all clogged up. And the pressure goes up. Uh, I have some pictures that are from a book I wrote a long time ago, the Douglas Medicine, and hopefully it's going to be on the Mailing it to Sabo and, uh, and Keith Smith, I'm going to send to you probably this afternoon or tonight. There's a, uh, a chapter on high blood pressure in Google's medicine. And the blood pressure, let me just uh, say, and by the way, our technology is going to get better. I just bought an iPad Pro and I'm going to learn how to connect it to my computer. So I will be able to show you these pictures in a much nicer way as time goes on and I get with technology. But unfortunately, I just got to kind of hand shown to you. So uh, one way the blood pressure goes up is like a, with that a weightlifter. He has to raise the blood pressure and he does it by increasing the activity of the pump, the heart, and the blood pressure goes up. But the blood vessels are all healthy and it's not dangerous. Uh, that blood pressure can go up under those circumstances when the heart beats strongly, say in our, in the running the weightlifting weights. So that's one way the blood pressure goes up is the pump increases. Another way you can get the blood pressure to go up is uh, by adding volume to the system, adding more fluid to the blood vessel system. And they say that's what salt does. And it does, yes it does, but just a little bit. Uh, actually lowering uh, blood pressure by reducing salt is, is a tiny benefit. By dropping the sodium intake to say 2,300 milligrams a day, which is what's recommended, the systolic top number goes down about three or four millimeters, and the bottom number, the diastolic, goes down about a half a millimeter. So it's not much effect changing the volume uh, by reducing salt uh, until you do extreme salt reduction. When you get to extreme salt reduction, like Walter Kemp did with the rice diet. Well, you're, I mean, he used to wash the white rice to get the sodium off. Uh, in that case, salt restriction can cause profound drops in blood pressure. But the usual recommendation to reduce salt to decrease the volume in the system, uh, not so effective, not at all. Most high blood pressure is due to what I was talking to you about first. It was due to a uh, inhibition to fold. It's due to blockages in the arteries. It's due to scars. It's due to atherosclerosis. Uh, when you eat the American diet, you get these sores on the arteries, which are called atherosclerosis, and you get blockage. You hear about this all the time when we talk about heart surgery. Oh, he had a 70% blockage, 80% blockage, 100% blockage. And so you actually get blockages, which cause peripheral resistance to flow. The heart's beating, but the blood vessels are either inelastic, they become inelastic because they're all full of disease, or they're actual physical blockages. And so you get a peripheral resistance. 
uh, the way the body compensates for that peripheral resistance is it has to raise the pressure to push harder through that uh, to the system blockage. So eating animal foods will cause the blood vessels to contract, that to become less elastic. And also, some of you have seen a film that I show of blood sludging. This was done in, by my friend Dr. Roy Swank. It's also been repeated by uh, Dr. Williams and Dr. Crow back in the 1950s and 60s, where you feed oil or fat. And what you see is the blood vessels stick together in clumps. You get something called low formation. And so you have this system of all these clumped blood vessels, uh, all of this uh, artery, uh, artery closure, uh, and inelasticity caused by the Western diet. So what does the body do? It does what it's supposed to do. It raises its pressure. The raised pressure is a reflection of how healthy your system is. It's not that this high blood pressure is causing the problem. It's just a sign of bad arteries. So the way we handle this, instead of cleaning up the arteries, instead of stopping the blood sludging, which you do immediately when you stop the oil and fat, blood vessels become very fluid. Uh, you also uh, improve the elasticity of the arteries. So you change your diet. And uh, soon you will reverse some of the blockages. Not the scars, but some of the blockages. Now, we could do that with diet. We've known we can do that with diet for hundreds of years. And Walter Kemper using the rice diet, he was very famous from 1939 for about, well, the rice diet existed for about seven decades at uh, Duke University. It was the most profitable part of the, the rice diet headed by Walter Kempfner. And uh, his, his diet would reduce blood pressure, really, really high blood pressure. Not the mamby-pamby stuff you guys go to the doctor for, but for malignant hypertension, where the blood pressure is in the range of 240, 250, over 140, 160. And he found that he could uh, make 60% of people normal with the rice diet, bring them down to a normal blood pressure. Uh, the DASH study, which is a, a very famous study on diet, showed a marked reduction in blood pressure uh, by eating healthier. But no one pays much attention to that at all. In our study, so I've got a whole pile of papers here, I don't know if I can find it. Uh, in our study that we published, in 2014, uh, what we found was that the average drop of blood pressure was uh, 18 over 11 millimeters of mercury, and nearly 90% of people stopped or reduced their medications. Anyway, yeah, go find that. Just look under uh, Nutrition Journal, and you'll find uh, our blood pressure study. It's in one of these papers. Here. I just got, I just, just too much reading and got. Yeah. Anyway. Put the link to that uh, when the replay goes out. Are you going to put that on? All right. Well, I'll kind of run through the papers. Um, anyway, so we get this profound drop in blood pressure. And we've been doing this, I mean, these are results over 10 years. The results I report are on 1,615 people. And of these people, uh, the average reduction in blood pressure of those who had high blood pressure, which is defined as uh, 140 over 90, that's what's considered high blood pressure. 60% of the people uh, in our study, uh, almost all the people reduced their blood pressure. And the average drop when people started with a real high blood pressure and on medications, the average drop was 18 over 11 millimeters of mercury just in seven days. And as I say, nearly 90% of people reduced or stopped all their blood pressure medication. And the uh, standard goal for blood pressure using medication, you know, if you're over 140 over 90, say you're 180 over 100 or something, when you use drugs, the standard goal offered by doctors uh, you know, and, and told to doctors uh, your, your goal is to reduce with medication without causing serious adverse effects. Your goal is to reduce the blood pressure to 140 over 90 and not further. 
not down to normal, not down to 110 over 70. When you start doing that, you start doing aggressive blood pressure treatment. What happens is you develop many side effects, including an increased risk of dying of heart disease. Yeah, it's called the J phenomenon of mortality. And uh, it may be one of my hand-drawn pictures if I can get my pen over here, it would, uh, would be helpful. Yeah, let's see, let's make, uh, this is the bottom number we're talking about. Let's make the bottom number 120, I'll show you here. And then let's make it 100 and then 90. And I'll show you this, my, my beautiful drawings, almost as good as Doug Lyle's. For those of you who know Doug Lyle. 80, 60, okay. So here you're using drugs and you're, and you're trying to lower the blood pressure. Okay, I think you can see that. And uh, when you lower it to uh, the bottom number, the diastolic, to 120, you have still a very high risk of dying of heart disease. And you lower it down to 100, you reduce the risk of dying of heart disease a bit. A bit, that's good. See, that's the mortality that occurs, the mortality. And then you reduce it down to 90 and you stop seeing the benefit. You stop seeing the best, stop seeing a reduction. In fact, when you get down to 85, you start seeing an increase in cardiovascular events. And when you get down to 70 and 60, you find the data shows in multiple studies. Well, we're talking about many, many studies. The data shows when you, but this is with medication now. If you're not on medication, this isn't what we're talking about. These are people aggressively treated with medication to lower their blood pressure. So when you lower it past the 80, 85, further down, then what happens is the risk of heart attack increases. For example, if you compare your, and death, if you compare the risk of heart disease, including dying, uh, with a target of 100 millimeters of mercury, that means the bottom number, you lower it down to 100, if you compare that with getting more aggressive and say lowering it down to 60, you have twice the risk of stroke from that aggressive treatment and as much as four times the risk of dying of heart disease. This is called the J or U-shaped phenomena and every doctor knows about it. And uh, of course they don't pay much attention to it because of the education that we're given. But you can look it up on, on the internet. You can it. It's usually called the J phenomena of mortality. So when you have high blood pressure, you want to treat. And we do treat at the McDougal program when it's needed. Remember, goal, goal treatment, goal blood pressure is 140 over 90. And that's where you treat too. If you get more aggressive than that, then you start having an increased risk of problems like stroke and heart attacks. So you can see why. What happens is you decrease perfusion pressure to the tissues. The pressure is up for a reason. It's because the blood vessels are sick and you, the body's trying to compensate for it and it does it by raising the blood pressure. And uh, then that's associated with more strokes and heart attacks. And what we found with, and it was done with a veteran study back in the 1970s, is what was found was when people have really high blood pressure, you know, the bottom number is 110 or 120 or 130, really high blood pressure, they're at very high risk of strokes, uh, heart failure and death. And the veteran study, which involved just a few people, I think there were less than 100 people in the study, uh, they showed you could dramatically reduce the risk of death and strokes by using blood pressure medication. And the medication used back then is the medication I use now and every doctor should be using. It's a diuretic called chlorothaladone. Chlorothaladone. I think you can get it. Uh, C H L O R T H A L I D O N E. I think that's it. Something like that. Chlorothaladone. It's not hydrochlorothiazide, which is the blood pressure medication commonly used. And that was because that was a newly introduced form of diuretic uh, back in the 1960s. Of course, the new brand name stuff, it gets the push. And uh, so by lowering the blood pressure in these people with malignant hypertension, you do do great benefit. Uh, the question is, is do you do more harm than good when you get more aggressive or you treat people with less high blood pressure? Do you do more harm than good? And what I showed you is a J-shaped 
or U-shaped curve of mortality. If you get too aggressive, you increase the risk of dying of heart disease and stroke. And, and we're talking about, you know, 20, 30 big studies have shown this, really without any question at all. Yeah, so people have the attitude that uh, uh, the lower the better, and they want to be normal. Uh, they don't want to be normal so bad that they're willing to switch to beans and rice and corn and things like that, but they're willing to take a handful of drugs. Uh, most of them, in fact, all of them except chlorothaladone, have not been shown to reduce the risk of stroke and heart attack. Only chlorothaladone has been shown to do that. That was in the ALHAT studies uh, done in the 1970s and continued through the 1980s. But uh, the drug companies, of course, you know, they had chlorothaladone, which they came cheap. So they found other drugs to lower blood pressure. And these drugs are poisons. Now, I, you, know, you don't like that word. You think it's emotional. You think I'm using it to get your attention. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the proper name for these medications. They're poisons. They poison the system. And as a result of poisoning the system, you can lower the blood pressure. For example, you could use beta blockers, which block the effect of adrenaline on the heart. And as a result, the heart becomes weak. And in some people, so weak, they can't even walk upstairs. But by weakening the heart, you can lower the blood pressure. So that's how beta blockers work. Uh, you can poison the arteries with calcium channel blockers, and they prevent the arteries from contracting. And in that way, you can lower the uh, blood pressure, too, because you relax the arteries with this poison called calcium channel blockers. Uh, you can poison the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are the glands above the kidneys. And you do those with ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. Very popular drugs these days, of course. The newest, the most expensive is the most popular. But they have not been shown to directly reduce mortality or uh, strokes or heart attacks. But they do lower the blood pressure, and that's what counts. Another way to lower blood pressure is to use diuretics. And as I told you, chlorothaladone, as tested in the had studies, has been shown to reduce the risk of dying from heart disease and from having strokes. And it's the drug that I always use. Uh, I'm rarely pushed to use another poison. Diuretics that poison the kidneys, and they also poison the blood vessels, which make them relax. But with uh, uh, chlorothalodiuretic, you uh, cause both benefits of volume, the volume, because you lose water with diuretics, and you cause benefits through relaxing the arteries, which decreases peripheral resistance. So you go to the doctor, and if your blood pressure is 140 over 90, the uh, official rules is you should be on a blood pressure medication to reduce your blood pressure to 140 over 90, or 80 maybe. I mean, those are the official guidelines. You don't start, in fact, the new American Heart Association guidelines say you should start, you should, should consider in people over 60. Starting blood pressure medication, if their blood pressure is 150 over 90 or higher, or higher. Uh, the uh, National Health Service, the British guidelines, say you should start blood pressure medication if the blood pressure is 160 over 100 or higher. The Cochrane Collaboration, which you all should know about, is a, a very famous organization of doctors and scientists who give opinions, say they can't really see benefit from lowering the blood pressure below 160 over 100. Well, so that's limited the, uh, the sales of blood pressure medications and doctors who really know the truth. Uh, if you're going to treat to, uh, say, 110 over 60, you're going to have to sell more medications to do that. If you're going to treat people with blood pressure higher than 110 over 70, say it's 120 over 80, that's high blood pressure. If you have blood pressure 120 over 80, uh, your risk of dying of heart disease is doubled. Not from the high blood pressure, it just reflects you have sicker arteries. But treating that and making it lower actually doesn't help things, it actually hurts things. At least that's what we've always believed. That we've, that, that's, what, that's the way I was taught to practice, that's the way most doctors today practice. That's the way most doctors and scientists believe we should treat, is with the uh, goal of making the blood pressure uh, 140 over 80 to 90, no more than 80 at the bottom of it. Well, 
a study was done recently, it was published September 2015, which changed all that. And uh, we're going to put this study up as a free study. They made it free. Yeah, the New England Journal of Medicine made it free. So you could all read it, get a chance to really believe it. And uh, it's uh, called the SPIRIT study, which is a systolic blood pressure study uh, to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease by making the goal of blood pressure treatment the target level instead of 140, which is official, and still is official, and real doctors well-read and non-influenced still use that as a goal to lower the systolic to 140. But doctors got together and made this randomized trial of intensive versus standard blood pressure control published in the New England Journal in 2015. Actually, it came out, what was the date? November 2015. But the Washington Post and the New York Times got a hold of the information. Uh, wonder how, wonder why. In September, and they just blasted all over the country about these results, about how they reduced the risk of heart attacks and strokes. The study wasn't published. Nobody could review the study. It didn't come out until November, the study. But the publicity came out in the Washington Post, uh, the New York Times, uh, New York Times in September. And, uh, oh, I don't know, the Washington Post did, did a similar. And so everybody got excited because uh, you could reduce the risk of overall death, cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attacks, not strokes, not strokes, uh, benefit blood per, uh, or heart failure, you could do that with the study. But nobody saw the study for another two months, no doctor, no scientist, and could really evaluate what's going on. And uh, finally, this study came out November 26, 2015. And it uh, showed a relative benefit, relative benefit, let's see if I can get to that. Oh, well, we'll do it. We'll do it. I as I go along and get to it. But they didn't talk about any uh, adverse effects. And the relative benefits were large when you use relative, but relative. You see, it's, 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 a, it's a game you play. Uh, uh, rather than absolute, what you're really interested in is a to relative. Like, for example, if you have two people and one gets a benefit, then you've got a 50% effectiveness, but you only measure two people. And so you take 100 people and one gets the benefit. Well, then it's only 1% relative benefit. But one person was saved in each case. And what you want to know is what the absolute benefit, not the relative. And so your, your newspapers and your advertisements and so on, they'll publish for you the relative benefit. And you're real excited. 40% reduction, 30% reduction. How could I turn that down? Well, in my pile of papers here, I've got some uh, numbers that I may find to be able to tell you about. Uh, but they didn't talk about serious adverse effects. Yeah, that didn't come out until November. The New England Journal of Medicine is. It's going to be, hopefully, uh, Gustavo's going to be able to attach it to this webinar. And uh, it showed uh, serious adverse effects, such as hypotension, uh, syncope, fainting, electrolyte ab abnormalities like low potassium, low, low sodium, uh, acute kidney injury and failure. They didn't show serious falls and problems with serious falls, which are pretty important too. Anyway. So you could read that particular study. Uh, these people who were in the intensive ter therapy where the goal was to lower the top number of the systolic blood pressure to 120 rather than the usual standard of 140. That was some more aggressive ther therapy. They had to use one more drug also. Standard use it's usually two drugs to get their goal of uh, 140 top number. But the intensive group in the study, uh, on average, had to use three drugs, of course, more adverse effects. Anyway, this is this. Uh, you, you, this study has been 
highly criticized in the scientific literature. You don't hear about it. You don't hear about it because the information you get comes from industry, from drone companies, and so that's what you hear about. Uh, many other studies have been done to look at uh, improved benefits by aggressive treatment, lowering the top number below 120. And these are studies like the uh, Transcend study, the INVEST study, the on-target study, multiple studies, on-target study, and all of them showing this J phenomenon mortality. When you get more aggressive, what happens is you increase the risk of stroke and heart attack. The exception to that was the Accord section, the, the high blood pressure section of the Accord study, which was really to study the effects of diabetic medication on people, which showed an increased risk of death by using medications to treat the diabetes. In fact, the National Heart Lung and Blood Institute stopped the Accord study 17 months early because of the increased risk of death and heart disease uh, when you were treating diabetes aggressively. But they had a subsection in a card study on blood pressure, and it also showed similar benefits to the SPIRIT study. But that's, that's the only one, as far as I know. All the other studies show uh, no benefit and actually harm. And I mentioned the names of some of those studies. They actually showed no benefit and some harm. Uh, it's the SPIRIT study. Well, anyway, it's, it's the money that talks. And I had uh, kind of a hard time finding this. Oh, there have been a newer, newer study than the SPIRIT study. It came out, it's the Korean Clinical Journal. And it, it was published in 2018, just published. Uh, this is uh, January 22nd, 2018, we're talking to you from. So this uh, was just uh, published, a uh, big study, uh, analyzed a, a million 234,000 people in the, can, in the Korean Cancer Prevention Study. Uh, no, they had a, a total of 22.5 million people if they followed up. And they found that aggressive treatment, lowering the diastolic blood pressure to 60 millimeters of mercury. Remember, I told you you only lower it to 80 or 90. Uh, they found a 23% increase in... Uh, Deaths, yeah, just published in 2018. That one didn't hit your newspaper, did it? Didn't come out in the Washington Post, the New York Times, or be advertised by so many different people. Oh, that's the Korean study. And you can look that up, find it, I think it's probably, probably available, free. My good friend, H. Uh, Gilbert Welch, he's a professor at Dartmouth. He's put out a note about this uh, spirit study, spirit study, which talks about relative benefits, say 30% reduction in heart disease, death, heart failure. You know, I'm really hard to pass up, right? 30%, it's a relative reduction he's talking about. Uh, he put out a little, a little note a few days ago very respected guy. He's been at our advanced study weekends. H. Gilbert Welch, uh, really a good man. And I uh, said millions of people will be treated without benefit and with harm. And then when he talked about uh, the, the, re the relative benefit in his analysis, or everybody's analysis, is a 25% reduction in cardiovascular events. When you go for a systolic, the stop number of 120 versus 140, you have a 25% reduction in the series of events, relative reduction. But the absolute reduction is only 2%. You know, only 2%. There are only two people showed, showed out of 100 showed that benefit, which means uh, if you got standard treatment, uh, your risk was 94% of having one of these adverse cardiovascular events, 8%. Whereas if you did aggressive therapy, it was 92%. But that's not how they publicize data unless you happen to be an honest doctor, really looking at the issues rather than looking at uh, the bottom line of medicine, which is 
profit. The Jay phenomena revisited again, spirit outcomes, favorite target, systolic blood pressure below 120. And uh, in this review, they say the frame of hand data, which is used, was terribly flawed. The blood pressure methods uh, taken were not practical, not the kind of blood pressure readings you take in an office setting. Uh, they had these people sit down for a long period of time and then take their blood pressure. Anyway, there are a, lot, a tremendous amount of flaws in the study. Uh, again, it was published in the Washington Post and New York Times. Two months, nobody had the data. Two months before, um, uh, this is a hard one for me to find. I, I really had to work on this. I worked uh, most of the weekend. I said, why? You know, why this aggressive treatment when we know we're hurting a lot of people and the benefits at best are a 2% reduction? Not 25%, which is the relative benefit, but only an absolute benefit of 2%. Well, let's see. Financial conflicts of interest between studies investigators and pharmaceutical companies. Hard to find. Uh, the lead investigator of the Spirit study. The lead investigator is uh, Jackson Wright. He's uh, been recently reported to have consulting fees from Medtronics. CVRX, X, uh, Tadexa, T A K E D A. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing some of these wrong. Uh, Dichi Sanyo, Pfizer, Novartis, and Take Care from drug companies. The lead investigator. That's, yeah. Now, why would drug companies want to get doctors to start treating? people with lower uh, blood pressures and treat them more aggressively. Come on, you can figure it out. Yeah, you make a lot more money. Yeah, that's what it's about, money. And, and, uh, and it, it, goes, it goes further, uh, the drug company connection, the peer spirit study, but they're getting good at burying the reason for studies. And so I had to spend almost all weekend finding this. Let's see, actual benefits versus harms. A thousand people. The more uh, uh, intensive therapy, uh, eight heart, this thousand people, sick people, cardiovascular disease. Uh, eight heart failures were prevented. Six deaths were prevented. Uh, 18, uh, 18 new cases of kidney uh, injury and failure were found with the aggressive treatment. Six cases of, uh, of some serious fainting and eight cases of electrolyte ab abnormalities were found. But, you know, you kind of look to find this part. Uh, the, oh, the other thing they did, this is a trick the doctors do, investigators do, is they stop, stop the study early and they do it for the good of humanity. Uh, they stopped this study a couple of years earlier than it was supposed to be stopped. And, of course, you think, well, they did that because they saw such benefit, they could no longer withhold this uh, wonderful therapy from the public. Well, this is dishonest medicine. you got to play the study all the way out to see what the benefits really are, and they didn't. And to really see what the side effects are, uh, this type of uh, halting and rapid production of uh, uh, rapid, rapid publication of studies, it says here, may lead to overestimates of treatment's effects, wider media distribution, dissemination. The media gets all excited. We, oh, they had to stop this study because the benefits of drugs were so great. And uh, quicker uptake in clinical practice. You know, just, the, just when you hear, oh, my goodness, they had to stop the study early because the benefit was so great. And by the way, the drug they used Primarily, it was chlorothaldone. They also used a calcium channel blocker, but primarily it was chlorothaldone used. A Cochrane review uh, in uh, 2009 stated that you shouldn't lower the blood pressure below 140 over 90 when you're treating the blood pressure. Uh, These findings suggest there's no need to sprint 
far as any drastic changes. And if you read the literature, if you read the science, you will see that. Uh, is that this is just this is a, a scam. Uh, there is some benefit that there's tremendous harm. There is a scam going on uh, to sell more blood pressure medications. Enormous amounts of initial hype, Washington Post, New York Times. Uh, many hypertensive experts are now saying that the spirit, or excuse me, sprint trial is difficult to interpret and can't be readily applied to the real world practice or be used to change clinical guidelines. Last week at a debate of the European Society of Cardiology meeting, the audience voted thumbs down, it's Europe, thumbs down against the use of the spirit results to guideline your, your treatment. That's what they said. Still can't find the details of the study. Uh, they're being hid from the scientists and the public. Uh, as I say, they have uh, industry uh, influence. Just let's just say industry bought it, paid for it. Yeah. So, but everybody's getting excited. Well, you may end up with reduced uh, risk of heart failure, but you also end up, may end up falling over. Uh, you may end up uh, with kidney failure. Uh, you spend um, you know, more time dizzy and so on. The study was supposed to last five years, but they quit it at 3.26 years. And said so there was a 27% reduction in all cause mortality and 25% reduction in composite influence. That's another way to confuse the public is you, instead of looking at the way uh, risk of dying and heart disease, you combine a whole bunch of things together. Uh, you report that, uh, that, that those combined findings, because actually the individual findings are the most important findings you're looking for. Not there. All right. Well, I did finally find our research uncriticized. Uh, it was uh, published in Nutrition Journal. All you can get this. It's really easy to find. Uh, this is a study of uh, 1,615 people of our patients. We excluded nobody. We took very careful blood pressure readings every day on 1,615 people, and we put them on the McDougal diet. That was it. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't it. We stopped or reduced blood pressure medications in 90% of people. Yeah, we did that. And if you look through the study, you'll see uh, uh, the findings. Well, let's see. Total cholesterol, uh, well, on the pages, you'll see it in the study. This is just with food and stopping medication. Uh, overall reduction was uh, 22 points in cholesterol. Overall uh, drop in top number systolic blood pressure. When you started with high blood pressure, greater than 140, was 18 millimeters of mercury. And when you started with a bottom number, diastolic, of 90, the drop was 11 millimeters of mercury in seven days, which is food. And, and reducing the medications or stopping them in 90% of people. We're running a program right now, and I had lunch with the participants, and they were all, oh. uh, this one, one of the fellows sat across from me and says, do you know that I've been on three blood pressure medications for the last five years, and uh, uh, Dr. Lim told me to stop them all. And I did. And that was two days ago. And my blood pressure is normal. Can't believe it. So anyway, I guess uh, in summary, I tell you that the, the Sprint study is another drug company funded study to sell more drugs to more people and uh, to use even more medication and those that need some medication. Uh, two drugs for the, uh, the group that was, uh, had a target, target systolic of 140, and three drugs for those who had a target of 120 or less. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's extensive, and the reading is clear. 
So what the bottom line is, is that high blood pressure does not exist in people who eat a diet like the McDougal diet. You can cut countries like in Asia. Um, well, that's not entirely true. Uh, in Japan, they have had, a, uh, in Korea, they've had uh, some higher blood pressures due to a tremendous amount of salt intake, like 11 grams of salt a day. So they've had some high blood pressure there. And it's, and it's interesting, you won't find these studies. And I won't find them again either because they all went up in smoke October 9th. But uh, studies of uh, people in Asia who have high blood pressure, uh, they damage their arteries because of the pressure. And you'll see atherosclerosis at bifurcations of the arteries. You know, uh, where, the, where the pressure hits, where two arteries divide, one artery divides into two. So right here in the, in the bifurcation, you'll see damage atherosclerosis through the high salt intake. Now on the Western diet, uh, it, you don't see it just in the bifurcations. It's all, all over the artery, it's extensively throughout the arteries. And this is a study that was published in uh, the 1960s. And I don't even know if I could find it again, but it, uh, it's a different type of blood pressure effect when you, um, when you cause high blood pressure from extreme salt intake, let's like say 11 grams a day. So uh, the bottom line is uh, in healthy populations of people, except for the extreme salt intake issues that we talked about in Korea and Japan, in high blood pressure, uh, in healthy eating populations, say in rural Africa, or rural Asia, or in India, high blood pressure does not exist. Uh, but when people change to the Western diet, what happens is, uh, you know, as many as half the people, their blood pressure goes up because it's supposed to. <laughs> it's trying to get uh, nutrients to your tissues so that you uh, uh, so that you can live and function well. And when people have really, really bad arteries and really bad hearts, as shown in the veteran study back in the 1970s, just a few people. Uh, benefit from my blood pressure treatment can be very valuable. And these people had malignant hypertension, really high. Uh, and they, uh, sh they showed benefits from using medication. You certainly want to do that. Uh, but if you eat well, especially you, you know, your whole life, if you eat well, you're not going to get high blood pressure. You're not going to get coronary disease, which uh, is, is the source of this peripheral resistance. It's just not going to happen. But if you eat the American diet, what happens is uh, as many as half the people in this country have blood pressure too high. And the response is always, always, except in a few places, a few friends of mine uh, practice differently. They use uh, a good diet, uh, street by drugs. And the drug used is the newest, fanciest one brought in by the cheerleader, carrying a pizza or a box of donuts uh, to get by the, uh, the doctor's staff. And of course, we're talking about a male-dominated medical system. And the prettier the cheerleader is, the more likely she gets time with the doctor. I know this is sexist. I know, but unfortunately, this is the truth. Uh, these drug salespeople who are mostly female uh, they are taught that the, your first job is to befriend the doctor. That's the way you sell the products. I mean, this is official. Your first job is to befriend, befriend the doctor. And if you can't do that, then what you do is you pull out the studies. And you show them these relative benefits without any risks. And that's the way you sell the drugs. So you can prevent high blood pressure uh, in our population of people. We cure the disease in most people. Uh, you know, as, I, as I told you, we drop the blood pressure 18 over 11 million years of mercury and reduce the stop of medication. But this doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes people have such severe artery disease or whatever, for whatever reason. They will uh, get to the end of the program seven days. And many people say, look, I came here and got off medication. I don't want you to put them on, put them on medication. But uh, Dr. Lim and I are real doctors. We're board certified. I'm a board certified internist and he's a board certified family practitioner. Uh, we're not looking for criticism from our colleagues or even worse from somebody's lawyer. 
We're not looking for that. Uh, we're looking to help you uh, be better, but not to harm you. And so we're going to treat you by the official guidelines, which are to lower your blood pressure to 140 over 90, but not more. But we go one big step further, and that is we change your diet, which has a profound effect on your blood pressure. So usually during the just during the seven days, you get your blood pressure down to 140 over 90 or less, and you all follow your drugs, and you leave drug free. And uh, our place, the McDougal program, I have to say, is one of the few places in the world that I know of where you can get off medication. Every other place, the doctors are too scared to take people off medication. They change from one brand to another. They may kill you by lowering your blood pressure too much. But they're not going to be criticized by not using drugs. And uh, as a result, you know, people are aggressively overtreated. Uh, but at our program, the McDougal program, you can read our data results. You can read our long-term one-year results. Uh, our goal is to get you healthy. Healthy people don't take drugs. Sick people do. And so all the attention of our staff is to reduce your medication, be it diabetic, uh, blood pressure, uh, GERD medications, constipation medications. We want you off these. And I don't know any place else where they put that kind of intensity into, into putting you in the category of a well person, not taking medications. Taking medications is burdensome. It's time consuming. And you got, when you get really aggressive, then you have to deal with all the side effects of the, the medication and the J or U phenomenon of mortality. I mean, if they make you look too good by the numbers, they're going to kill you. But uh, nobody seems to care about that. All right. Well, you have given us plenty of um, material to think about, Dr. McDougall. I, I personally think that people need to watch this webinar again. Yeah, I think so. I think I better plug in my computer or we're going to be yeah. dead in the water. Okay, we're going to be um, I just want to encourage everybody to watch this webinar cool. again when it comes out tomorrow. And um, would you be willing, Dr. McDougall, to maybe next week take a few questions from this sure. webinar? Cool. Because we have gone over the time and we need to stop in the next I'll few minutes. I'll talk that long. You talk, but I'll of course... Talk. So interesting. I didn't mean to. I, I wanted to talk to you. I also wanted to talk to you about uh, Trump's Trump. <laughs> I, I, you know, I have a hard time getting that word out of my mouth. But I wanted to talk to you about his physical and his poor health, and you know the, the concern the public has that he might drop dead from his poor health. Not getting into politics. I also wanted to talk to you about. Uh, the new British results that came out on treating uh, or preventing flu with flu shots. And okay, all they, right. They yeah. also, uh, you get it from the newsletter. We didn't have time to get into that. The flu shots don't work. No. So don't work before. All right, Gustavo, you're well, good. We will continue with part two then uh, next well, Monday. and uh, Nine o'clock Pacific time. We can add, you can address those topics you just mentioned, plus I will select some of the questions that people have typed because I think they're very interested. Well, and uh, we'll get from I'll there. Enough, right? The truth is simple and easy to understand. And I realize I had a lot of information for you, but it's uh, most of it's written down in the book, McDougall's Medicine, or I believe it's my January 2009 newsletter, which we're sending you as attachments, I believe, as well. Right. We get up to speed and reading for when we get to that. We do need to, to read this information and, and watch it again because it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot. It's a lot. Just, to, just, just remember, sick people take drugs. Your goal is to be healthy. To be and healthy. healthy is to fix the problem. The problem is food poisoning from the Western diet. And you can't get well. And you can't stop seeing doctors. Uh, anyway, thank you, Gustavo. Uh, thank you, especially all your effort from... Uh, Put together this from Argentina. And <laughs> I know you got a big schedule down there. Just remember, you got a place to live. Just bring your tent. You can come live in Santa Rosa. I'm going to start looking for that tent. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Very good. Uh, it's a pleasure. We'll see you next Monday, hopefully, and we'll yeah. see everybody else. Tell people, when are you coming to the uh, intensive weekend? I am. It's February 9th through 11th. I will be there with you, and maybe we can do a webinar from there. And you bring your daughter? Yes, I am. So that will be a special. Uh, we're running a 10 day now. We'll probably get another 10 day in a couple of months. Yes. Well, it's uh, very inexpensive, relatively yeah. inexpensive weekend. So go to drmcdougal.com and sign up right now. <laughs> It, it is very, 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 very affordable. And uh, I can't think of any other way to get all this information. There's uh, no other way you'll meet the, the, no. the real people who do this, like uh, Gustavo Chalosa, doctor. Yeah. And, uh, well. Novick and Doug Delisle and all the rest of the crew. Everyone. everyone. Um, we, the, uh, some people are asking here, an email goes automatically to all of you who registered and you will get the replay that way. And if not, you can go to drmcdougal.com sometime tomorrow in 24 hours and the webinar will be posted there. Well, and hopefully the links. And the links as well. Yes. Hopefully we'll do some reading and, and I think you'll, what you'll find is uh, I've been telling you the truth. But all we, right. we have truth and success. They got all the money. Yes. But well, we got truth and success. And that's what matters. I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Sorry I ran over. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's extremely interesting to hear you speak. Thank okay. you. Bye -bye. Okay. Goodbye, everyone.